my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel. And today I have another video for you all. Today, as you can tell, the setup is a little bit different. We are actually going to be doing a makeup slash get ready with me chatty type of video. I did a poll recently on Instagram and Twitter where I asked you guys if you would be interested in seeing more makeup related content and the overwhelming answer was yes. So I decided I would give the people what they want and we are doing some makeup here today. Now this is also a chatty catch up type of video. So even if you're not super into makeup, if you're interested in like me as a human being, maybe this will still be interesting to you if you just wanna put it on in the background. I will not be insulted. I am also not a beauty guru. I am not really a makeup person. This does not mean that the channel is turning into a makeup beauty related thing. I have no interest in doing that. I just thought today the timing worked out really well because today is my normal filming day, but then I am also volunteering at a dungeon party later this evening. So I thought it'd be good to give you guys like a whole complete look and example of what I might be wearing. Now, actually the look I'm going to be doing is basically one that I already did kind of. I did this for a live stream a few weeks ago where I did an Ace Pride look for June for Pride Month. And I wanna do sort of the same thing, but do it as a full face look, maybe with a few minor modifications here and there, and then just kinda of talk to you guys about what's going on. So let's get into it. The first thing that I want to address is my hair. So I have chosen a very honest time <laughs> to film this video. I really badly need to dye my hair. I need to get my bangs trimmed. This nail chipped off in the shower this morning. It's, it's very, very real right now. So for about the last six months or so, I have been entirely letting my hair air dry. I have really stopped heat styling it, except for occasionally, maybe two or three times a month, I will either use my curling iron or I will use a straightening iron on it, but otherwise I try to be very gentle with it in terms of heat. That helps with the color, that just helps with overall hair health, and because I don't work in an office anymore where I have to have perfect hair every day, I can afford to wait to let it dry. So usually what I will do is when I am getting ready to film or if I'm going out somewhere, I will obviously wash my hair first. I wash my hair about one to two times a week. And then when it's drying, I wait until my bangs are done. So usually I'm doing like my skincare stuff. And by the time I'm done with that, my bangs are pretty much dry. And then when everything is set in, I will then go ahead and start doing my makeup. What I use in my hair for styling products is I use this Hawaiian leave-in conditioning mist. This is from Alba Botanical. And then I also use this uh, Redken One United Multi-Benefit Treatment Spray. And this just helps keep the frizz down. It helps keep everything nice and smooth. It helps protect the color from UV, all of that sort of thing. So that's pretty much what I use in my hair. Otherwise, I try to not really style it that much. The first thing that I do when I'm putting on makeup is I will use this Paula's Choice Body Lip Treatment Balm. I have had this for a while. I probably need to replace it. And this is just a really good thick balm. This is what literally has cured my dry lips. And I just put that on kind of a thick-ish layer. And I like to put this on first because it allows it to sink in before I put on liquid lipstick because that's pretty much the only thing that I put on my lips is liquid lipstick. And then it also creates a barrier for when I am putting on my foundation and everything else on my face. It creates a barrier for that. So when I am taking that off, it's a little bit easier on my lips. There's just like something between my lips and the foundation. So it's easier to take off without any kind of staining or anything else. Speaking of which, I always do my face makeup first. I know some people do their eyes first and then their foundation, which blows my mind, not what I do. What I've actually been using recently that I've surprisingly been enjoying a lot is this Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I actually got this as a sample when I was ordering my eyebrow product and it just happens to work super, super well. I wasn't expecting that. I have tried many primers 
in my day. I don't use them really regularly because they have, for the most part, a normal skin type. So I don't need primers as much because I really only tend to wear foundation when I film. So for my foundation, what I use is the Ordinary Colors Serum Foundation. This is their lightweight or their sheer foundation. And this is in the shade 1N, which is very fair and neutral. I would like to get a white mixer for this because I do find that it is a little, little tiny, tiny, tiny bit dark. At least on camera, you guys probably don't notice, but I can tell in real life. So at some point I will remember to order that. But what I start off with is I brush my bangs <laughs> out of the way. And I just take a little pump of this. Rub it between my fingers. I have no idea if I'm using this correctly, but this is how I do it. And I kind of start out on my nose and then down on my chin and then kind of just up onto my forehead area. And then I just sort of rub it all in and then kind of spread it out onto my cheeks. But I try to concentrate it more on those main areas and kind of just pat everything out. And it definitely, you can feel it drying on your face pretty quickly. And then from there, I use a beauty blender to apply my foundation. And how I do that is I just take open the cap and I kind of do like a, like one and a half ish pumps, like very soft pumps. It's a little bit hard to tell, at least when I've pumped on this, like what a full pump actually is. And I kind of just pat that onto the skin on one side of my face. And then I will use the beauty blender just to kind of like bounce that into the skin on the flat side of the beauty blender. Bum, 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 bum. And yeah, that is basically what I do for foundation. I don't really do anything in terms of setting powders or concealer or anything like that. The reason why I use the lightweight foundation is because I like still having my skin texture show through. And that's why I like the Milk Makeup, the Hydro Primer, is because that makes my foundation look like skin in a way that I have not really seen before with anything else that I've used. And I like just being able to have my, my natural skin, my freckles and everything still kind of show through, but just generally, you know, evening everything out, all of that good stuff at the same time. So definitely not really a heavy coverage person. They do make a heavier coverage version of this foundation and I have used it in the past, but for me, it was just higher coverage than I, than I really wanted. And it just, it, this, this one just works for me. I do have a little spot on my forehead right now, which actually doesn't really happen that often anymore. I had acne for a very long time, y'all. I had acne pretty much continuously between the ages of 12 and 23. So like even in the last year, like it's definitely still been something I'm dealing with, but I've just found skincare that really, really works for me. So now I only get things very occasionally, especially also because I do have hormonal birth control, so that regulates things as well. And then usually by the end, I kind of just take whatever is left over and I'll, I'll put it around my eye sockets. Now, with this and with my foundation in general, I'm not like obsessed with concealing my dark circles. Uh, that's just something that I genetically deal with no matter how much sleep I get, no matter what my nutrition is, anything else, they're just there. And I'm, I'm not particularly concerned with hiding them, so I don't worry about it too much. Uh, and that is pretty much what I do for foundation. Again, I'm not a beauty girl. I have no idea if this is like the optimal way of applying this foundation, but that's pretty much what I do. Now, I managed to not really get any foundation around on my lips, which is great. So if I get a lot of foundation on my lips at this point, I would take a washcloth and I would just gently wipe off the foundation, which would obviously take off the treatment, but I didn't really get anything on it. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. So for the eye look that I'm doing today, again, it's going to be white, gray, 
and purple so like ace pride colors basically and how I'm gonna do that I'm gonna start off with some eyeshadow primer I use the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion I got this from like a Nordstrom rack I guess they have changed their packaging so that's probably why I got it for so cheap eyeshadow primer important first step I definitely did not believe in eyeshadow primer when I was in high school so that definitely impacted my ability to do eye looks I'm just gonna put that all over up into my brow bone and on my eyelids now with this I have found that I do definitely need to use a base over it because even though it goes on pretty much skin tone when it dries down it does seem to get a little bit darker so even if I'm only doing eyeliner and mascara or something like that I will do like a translucent or a skin tone color on top of it just to make sure I don't have like weird dark spots on my eyes the color I'm going to start off with for eyeshadow is going to be from this Viseart Brights palette you guys are always asking me like what eyeshadow I use. Chances are it is one of the two palettes that I am using today. So let me just show these to you guys. So this is the Vizzy Art Neutral Mattes palette and this is the Editorial Brights palette. I These are like my main go-to palettes. Like if I had to pick two palettes to live with for forever, it would be these two. The Vizzy Art stuff, it's expensive. I always get it on sale from Muse Beauty Pro. Although they do have it at Sephora now if you would be interested in that. So there are options. That's pretty much what I always start out with. If I'm doing a neutral look, I will use the lightest shade from the Neutral Mattes palette. But today I'm gonna to be starting off with some white. I'm going to be using this Sigma brush. I think this is the F50. The names on these have all worn off because I've, I've just used them so much. So I just pack that on a dense fluffy brush and I put that all over the lid kind of focusing on the lid and then bringing it up into the brow bone. I don't really do any like brow bone highlighting type things. I just try to make sure that there is transition that goes all the way up the eye. So when I'm blending out earlier, the eyeshadow that's brighter has something to blend into more or less is the logic there. And that is going to be the base layer for the look. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to grab the gray from the Viseart Neutral Mattes palette. Fun fact, as you will see later, this is also the eyeshadow that I use for my contour because I could not find anything that was a contour that I liked that wasn't just like $30 on its own when this works well enough that wasn't like too warm or too whatever else. So I just use the gray from this palette and it doesn't make a difference, I'll be honest, and you'll see later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the back side of that same brush and now I'm gonna put some gray on there. I find that this one is fairly pigmented. It definitely will not get black if you put too much on, so don't be worried about that. But I'm gonna take that on the outer two thirds of my eye and just start to slowly build it up. I find if anything, this one can be, at least when I put it on my eyes, I don't really notice it when I put it on my face, but like when I put it on my eyes, it can sometimes be a little bit, I don't wanna say it's patchy per se, but like it does take a little while to build up the color compared to some of the other ones. So that's kind of what we're doing. I am building it up on my lid and then going slightly into the crease because we are going to blend that later. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye. So in terms of life update stuff, things that have been going on, I have had a very busy couple of months. I was in Belize in May. We went on a trip for a couple of friends' birthdays. They were having some big birthday years and we went on a trip we went for nine days. It was fantastic. And I was a little bit worried about getting work done when I was there, you know, doing YouTube stuff. But I somehow managed to get photo shoots done and content. Like, I would literally just naturally wake up at, like, 6 a.m. and be like, all right, let's go. And then I'd knock out, you know, some photo shoots for, like, two hours because we were on a part of, um... And we were on part of Belize where basically to get to anywhere else we would have to take a boat to get into town and the first boat wasn't until like 8 at the earliest anyways so you know we were kind of 
trapped on the beach to be able to do anything. And so that was, that was quite fun. I actually don't know if I've done any like YouTube updates about that, but I have lots of photo shoots on Patreon and like things about it on Patreon. I have so many things y'all. It was fantastic. It was beautiful. If anybody is like, oh, I wonder if I should travel to Belize, I would highly recommend it. The one thing about it is it's super not kink friendly. So, um, I would not recommend it if you want a kinky vacation to necessarily go there because it is a little bit more on the conservative side. But besides that, it's quite nice. So I would recommend it. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do now that I have this gray on, we are going to <clears throat> take another brush. I'm going to put this one aside and I'm going to start putting gray on the underside of my, um, my lower lash line basically is where we're going to be putting things. So what brush do I want for that? I want this brush. This is another Sigma brush. This is the E20, the short shader brush. This is basically a little short dense brush. I'm going to do the same thing. Just going to pack on that gray. I'm going to make sure to put this on both sides of the brush because I find it just works better for application with this particular brush for some reason if both the sides have product on it. I don't know. I don't know what the science is there, but that's basically what I'm doing. And I'm basically going to connect that gray on the other side to the gray that I put on the upper part of the eye there just to make sure there's like a nice little continuation going on. And I have done this before where I haven't really put anything on the lower lash line. I kind of like to alternate it, you know? I like looks where it's all on the top. I like looks where it's kind of even on top to bottom. Just sort of depends what I'm feeling like on any given day. And I do find as well with this kind of more densely packed brush that it does end up looking a little bit darker. So I can also kind of use this to touch up places on my eye maybe where this didn't get as much pigmentation as I wanted it to. Although functionally this is really going to be more a, a especially in this outer part here, is more going to be a base for when the purple goes on. Fun fact about my eyes is that I have a birthmark right here. That causes this eyebrow to be lower than this one is, which means that when I am doing makeup, this eye is a little bit more hooded than this eye is. So I have to be kind of careful about how I apply things because even if I apply them literally evenly, they might not look even if that makes sense. Also makes this eyebrow a little bit lower. So especially when I put eyebrow product on that can make things look even more pronounced, shall we say. And that is basically what I'm going to be doing with the gray. I just kind of want to make sure that things are all even in terms of how far in they're going in towards my inner corner. I usually use my eyeball as a guide for this. So I will try to make sure, okay, you know, if it's going halfway to the pupil of my eye on both sides, something along those lines as well. I am also going to, with my finger, just touch up the white a little bit on the inner corner, just to make sure it's nice and bright. And with these Vizier eyeshadows as well, you can definitely apply and blend them with just your fingers. It's, it's amazing. Just do that real quick just to make sure it's nice and bright looking and then I'm gonna at the end I'm gonna blend this all out with a different brush so now we're on to the fun part of this look this is where we're gonna be adding in the purple I am going to be using this purple here from again the editorial brights palette there is this mauvey color which I use pretty frequently I find it definitely reads more a pink than either red or purple so I don't use it a ton but I mean you guys can kind of see there's texture marks in these pans where I've used them before I think this is the only one that I haven't really used before so maybe I should do a look with that at some point so we're gonna be using the purple the main brush I'm gonna be using for this is my favorite brush of all time if I had to pick one brush which is the small angled blending brush I think it's E45 can't really read it on here because it's worn off but this is what I use for 99% of the things that I do in my eye. It's this and this are my two workhorses as far as my eyeshadow is concerned. So I'm going to kind of swirl that around on the pan, get a light little bit on here because I do find the purple can have a little bit of fallouty tendencies. And now what I'm going to do with this is I'm basically going to take the brush and kind of arc it and swoop it from my upper eye down to my lower and back again just kind of build the color in kind of a circle around my eye 
and I usually start that by starting at my my outer lower corner and then working up and purples are also very hard to formulate so I'm always very appreciative when there is an actual purple that works now I'm blending this down into the gray that I already applied on my lower lash line and it kind of has the effect of making it look like a darker purple as you can see so that is basically what I am doing here and I'll kind of just keep dabbing it and applying more until I get to a level of density with the color that I want and I think I want to keep the purple kind of down onto this half on my lower lash line and kind of blend it up into the corner up here now like I said I have done basically this look before during a live stream but I cannot really recreate my own makeup like it just so depends on kind of what I'm feeling from day to day that it'll pretty much always end up looking differently no matter what I do so I'm just gonna take this really lightly and just kind of blend it up more in towards the brow give it some more some more drama some more elevation that way because that's the one thing I really learned from doing makeup for YouTube for a long time is like you can definitely make things a little bit more dramatic than like at least what I was naturally inclined to do. Like I definitely stopped when I got to the crease and I just wouldn't apply eyeshadow past that because I thought it would look like too much. But like especially when you're on camera sometimes bigger is better. So that is kind of what I'm going to end up with here for this gray look. And then normally what I will do if I need to clean anything up is I will actually just take my finger and I will like run it around on the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. And then while we are doing that, I'm going to chat a little bit more about what's been going on. So I have not talked about this on YouTube at all before. And by the time you guys will see this, it will have already happened. So fingers crossed. But Mr. Tex and I, as you know, probably, I don't know, maybe you're new here and you don't know that. So I have a partner named Mr. Tex and we live together and I moved in with him in February, March of this past year. And we have been talking about doing that for a long time. Like probably, you know, we've been together three years in August and for about the past year, we've kind of been talking about the circumstances under which I would move in and blah, blah, blah. And that ended up actually working out because I could do YouTube full time so I didn't have to worry about trying to find a job where he lived and all that kind of stuff. So what ended up happening is I got to move in and the place that we live in now is kind of like this long, narrow townhouse, shotgun row house type of thing. Like it doesn't necessarily, it has space, but it's not really laid out in like an economic, like efficient way. So we've been looking at a new place to live and we have picked one out. We have put an offer in, the offer was accepted. So now we have a new place and we are currently in the process of moving in. We're not gonna be moving in for another, I think four or six weeks, somewhere in that time window is when we are planning on officially moving in. But since then we are like, not since then, until then, until then, until we are moved in we are basically designing everything we are painting things i am currently wearing my painting sweatpants that are covered with different swatches of paint on them and it is a fun experience but it is certainly something that takes a lot of time like i think we have we've been painting for the past weekend basically we were painting and i think so far we're up to like maybe 16 hours worth of painting we're gonna paint again tonight before I go to the event and then we're probably going to be painting again at some point later on this week so we will see how all that turns out we are also picking out different things just to put in the house we are kind of planning on putting in a big dungeon area in the rec room space in the house and that's also very exciting because currently where I am sitting right now is my filming space the guest bedroom my office and also the playroom 
all together at the same time. So being able to have a space where those are more separated from each other, in particular, not having to worry about this as a play space and also my workspace will be really, really nice. So I am definitely looking forward to the time when I get to have both of those spaces separated. And it's just been, it's been a very fun, exciting process. I am so excited to see exactly when all the paint is done and the furniture is in, what it's all going to look like. It is so wonderful. There is so much natural light there. It has a very cute little backyard. It's very, very nice. Not that the place we live in now isn't nice. It just, it was never kind of meant to really work long-term for the both of us, you could say. Like it's, it was always something where we knew that, oh, you know, once we get settled in and, and you know, it's it's not winter anymore, we'll start looking at places and kind of see what's available and then go from there. And it all ended up working out. So that is like the big thing that I've been working on is like moving stuff and coordinating that and, and, and trying to kind of get ready for that, especially because it is the summertime. So that always makes things like so much more busy because there's all sorts of things going on. But I will let you guys know when I have more updates about that, how everything is going, how the move is going. And hopefully I will have pictures to share with you guys and stories and things as we progress through this whole process. So that is basically what I'm gonna be doing for my eyeshadow is what I have done right here. I wanna do some just blending, just to kind of really just concentrate, look at my eyebrows, see how everything is going. And yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I just want to kind of blend in between the gray and the white here really quickly. This is my favorite blending brush. So I don't really have anything else that I, that I feel as confident with as a blending brush. I do like this little random color prop brush that I got. It works pretty well. I'm going to take some of the white, just kind of dab it on there a little bit and just sort of swirl it into the gray and into the purple there at the inner corner. And I also will use my hand, like if I'm changing colors or something, I will dust it off on my hand just like out of habit because it's not like I'm sharing this makeup with anybody else. Not like I'm sharing this makeup brush with anybody else. So I'm not, not too worried about getting my own, my own stuff, so to speak, on, on the brushes. And also I do clean them regularly with a brush cleaner. So again, not too worried about it. And especially we not with something that's super, super cheap. So I think I am good with this so far. I like how it's looking in the camera. I keep looking in the viewfinder. Sorry if that's bothering people, but that is just my habit. Like, cause this is kind of like a secondary mirror to me. So I keep checking it out and being like, does that look okay on camera? I don't know. But the next step that I want to do is my eyebrows. So let's do my eyebrows. The thing that I have been using is the Milk Makeup Kush Fiber Brow Gel. I was previously using their darkest color at the time, which was Grind, and that was like a dark ashy brown. However, they recently come out with more colors, and this is the color Diesel, which is a cool black, which I'm so happy about because I love how this product performs. I think it looks really great on my eyebrows, but there's especially some videos where you can really tell that my eyebrows don't match my hair tone, and I feel like it just throws everything off. So I'm so, 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 so very happy that they have come out with something that is a much better shade, and it's so easy to use too. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this eyebrow is kind of a little bit lower down than this one is. So usually when I do my eyebrows, I will start with this one and then do this one second and kind of fill this one in to match just because this one's a little bit harder to do. So when this one is finished, it's like a better guide basically. And I start with the inner part of my eyebrow. So this is kind of like hard to show, but I'm kind of just taking the wand and running it up in the front part of my eyebrow and then kind of using using strokes to bring it back through the rest of the hair. I don't really have like a particular shape I'm trying to do. I kind of just go with whatever my natural eyebrow shape is. Now the one thing with this one is because the previous color I was using was so much lighter. I kind of had to fill in and be a little bit more heavy handed with that one. 
and this one I have to do the opposite so I'm still trying to like learn where that balance is between like too much product and not enough product although on this eyebrow it's usually not as obvious because it's really just a super light fill in it's mostly just kind of taking care of some areas in the front that are a little bit sparser and that's that's pretty much it with this side if only both of my eyebrows could be this easy and I kind of just try and make sure that like the edges and stuff on top are like even although I do have to be careful because sometimes if I try to push product around too much it'll like create its own bald spot which is weird but such is such is life I'm gonna call that good for now especially because my bangs are really grown out most of my eyebrows are gonna be covered anyways so you know don't sweat it don't spend too much time doing stuff that's not gonna work for you so other eyebrow this one is a lot more, it's a lot more work. Oh, goodness gracious. So let's see what else has been going on in life recently. I mean, the moving thing is obviously a really big thing. We went to Belize recently. We also went to Ropecraft in Chicago. Uh, and I did actually film a whole video talking about my experience with that. So if you're interested in hearing about rope bondage and conventions and if it's worth going and all the good information there's a, a whole video about that if you want to check it out but that was like the other big trip that we did recently was that and I'm honestly kind of really looking forward to a summer where I get to be at home a little bit more I get to be here and enjoying the sunshine and not traveling all over the place I do like traveling but I'm also definitely a home buddy at heart so having the opportunity to stay at home and kind of just enjoy that and enjoy being in a habit because I'm definitely a creature of habit if nothing else just kind of being able to 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 get into a groove of things because I really feel like since I've moved in there have just been so many changes going on like so much adjusting because of how different life is like being a youtuber full-time versus and and being like you know a full-time live-in submissive at the same time versus like you know living separately and visiting on the weekends and dealing with vanilla job like all that stuff is just so 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 different like there's so much adjusting and like you know all the travel and everything else we were doing as well so usually at this point I try my best to like relax my eyebrows and see how they're looking see if they kind of resemble even this usually with this one I have the problem again because it's lower down it ends up looking thicker because I want the top line of this brow to match the top line of that brow so usually you either have to make this one a little bit thicker on the bottom or you need to try and make this one on this side look thinner so I'm gonna do a little bit of a combination of both here just because that's how I'm feeling today I've definitely not perfected this eyebrow routine by any means but like I couldn't do my eyebrows at all like six months ago so I'm counting this as a step up you know there's always room for improvement but I am happy with the improvement that I have made so far I also don't really know how much this is actually noticeable by anyone but me so there's always that too all right I think I'm basically happy with my eyebrows. So let us move on to the next step for the eyes. We are almost at the end here already. It's crazy. Well, I think the next step is doing my mascara. So I always start by curling my eyelashes. You don't have to do this, but I like doing it. I actually have naturally pretty long lashes. So really my goal when I put on mascara is to add volume versus length, but I find that it's much harder to get volume mascaras than, than length mascaras. Uh, so I kind of just do what I can, because actually I can get to a point where my eyelashes are so long that especially when they're curled, they will curl up and like leave dots on the top of my eyeshadow, which is not a look that I'm going for what I will do so I have this little set that I got from Lancome that I got at Sephora during one of their sales and I liked it so much that I bought it again they have a little mini travel set they have I don't know how to pronounce it it is a base mascara I don't know if it's gonna focus because the font on it is like this light gold color but we will see 
It is the Seals Lancome Booster XL. It's like a mascara primer, more or less, and then the Hypnos Drama Mascara. And I do find, actually, surprisingly enough, this primer works well. I was not necessarily expecting it to do anything because there are certainly a lot of gimmick products that don't actually really impact it, but I do actually notice a difference when I wear this versus when I don't wear it. And it does, in particular, help with the thickness portion of the eyelash problem. Not that my eyelashes are a problem. Like, as far as my features on my face go, the eyelashes I have are certainly not the thing I would choose to complain about. So I kind of just put that on there. Tempting to make the coverage even on both sides because if I mess up and put too much of the primer on one eye, not enough on the other, the final product will certainly look different. And I'm going to do a little bit on my lower lashes, kind of focusing around just the very base of the lower eyelashes because they really don't want it to be too, too long on the bottom either. I don't want super spidery lashes, although that will inevitably happen because that is the natural way that my eyelashes are. So I'm going to let that just sit for a minute and I'm going to go ahead because it's been sitting for a long time now. I'm going to go ahead and take this off so I don't have like a layer or something necessarily right on top of my lips when I put on the liquid lipstick, but I don't want something that's going to be like, I want a little bit of a barrier, but not like a huge barrier. You know what I mean? All right. I feel like I have let this dry for long enough. So I'm going to go ahead and put on the rest of my mascara. I've actually been practicing putting on false eyelashes. I don't think they're ever going to be something that I wear like every day because I'm always so worried that I'm going to mess up the rest of my eye makeup when I put it on that like it's just it's not the paranoia is not worth it you know I don't want to do a whole eye look and then mess it up because I can't put on my eyelashes correctly and then have to restart it and the reason why I like this this mascara in particular is I find that it does give me defined volumized eyelashes without them being too long and without them being too clumpy there are certainly eyelashes or not eyelashes there are certainly mascaras that i use that do give me more volume but they do tend to look a little bit clumpy so i don't use them as much especially if i'm filming but there are certainly a lot of options when it comes to mascara like way too much like to the point where i know there's a lot that have been coming out that people are super excited by that i just will probably never try because i like this enough and i i'd rather like spend money on the thing that I know that I like versus just trying a new thing because it's like the new hotness, you know what I mean? All right, so the last thing that I want to do on my eyes today is I want to use this NYX Lid Lingerie. These came out like forever ago. And this is kind of just like a shiny white, it's called White Lace Romance. And it's basically just a little something to add a little, little sparkle to the inner corner. I don't normally do a lot, I mostly do looks that are entirely matte or mostly matte so i don't really do a lot with with shine but it's nice to have a little little something a little pop so i'm just going to put that into the inner corner there and i will inevitably put more on one eye than the other so that means i have to even it out and i honestly i think with this look i might not even do wing liner i know shocker i will not be doing wing liner i almost always do wing liner but i just feel like this look is strong enough on its own to where i don't really need to do a big wing if you want to see this look where i did do a big wing that i did on the live stream so if you want to see that it's over there but yeah i think that's good i i'm not super good at applying these in the inner corner of my because i don't do it super often but uh I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy enough with that. I feel like that's good enough, you know? All right, eyeliner. So, eyeliner, I use the NYX Liquid Vinyl Liner. I've also used the Matte Eyeliner. They're both great. They do take some practice to use because of the tip style. It's kind of almost like a really, really small paintbrush as opposed to, like, a felt tip or something else. So if you're not super used to eyeliner, this probably wouldn't work great for you. But if you do love eyeliner this just gives such great finish and coverage 
it's not really spotty or anything like that so I'm just gonna do like yeah I think just like a little a little something like that it's a little bit on the upper upper eye kind of just allow allow the purple to flourish in its natural state just do a little something different from what I normally do which is like cat eye by default more or less It's always so really hard to do this and explain everything that I'm doing while talking at the same time about other things. Maybe I should rethink this format in the future. I feel like this video is going to be 80,000 minutes long. <laughs> but we will, we will see how it all turns out from the magic of editing. Alright, I think I am happy with that. The very next thing I'm going to do is my contour. So going back to the neutral mattes palette, yes. There is a lot of dust on this because I use this literally constantly. I'm going to use this gray right here. And then the brush I'm going to use is an angled contour brush. This is the Sigma EF. Yeah, I think it's F because it's F for face, right? F40. I'm just going to kind of narrow this brush. And then I'm going to just kind of swipe it through the gray product. So I'm basically going to have a line of gray on this brush. And then I'm going to start at this very outer corner, my face here, and kind of sweep it down and underneath my cheekbones. Now, I don't, if I'm just going out, I won't normally wear this because I feel like it looks kind of strong in real life. But when I'm filming, and especially when I'm filming with non-natural light, I will do contour because I feel like it just adds something, you know, that is necessary for filming without looking like I have a s super just flat face, I guess. I don't know. Add some dimension that the uh, non-natural light might take away, basically, is my logic there. But it's certainly not something that I wear every day, and it's certainly not even something that I wear when I'm going out all the time because I think it can look kind of severe, but it is nice for filming. It is nice for pictures. It just adds a little bit of, a little bit of dimension. I don't really wear blush or highlighter. Again, I don't really set my face with powder. I, I skip a lot of the normal steps when it comes to doing my makeup. So take from that what you will. This is kind of where we're at. Very last thing I'm going to do here, liquid lipstick. So I have these old gelato containers that I use to keep my liquid lipstick in. These are ColourPop. I do have some ones from other brands, but this is like the main stuff that I use. I have another container that has all of my neutral or like lighter shades in it. This is all of my bright colors. I have a ton of purples. So let us evaluate here. I have these four purples. And normally what I do is I will look in the mirror. I will hold them up to my face next to my eyeshadow. And I will just kind of check to see, hmm, what color do I think would go best with this look today? Mm -hmm. uh, and these are all pretty much the matte ones. I think I maybe have a couple that are the satin finish like this one's a satin finish one up here um but i don't tend to use that a whole lot i'm actually thinking i might do that although it will come off later actually you know what i think i'm going to use this one this is chaps from the amanda steel color pop collection yes this liquid lipstick is probably older than it needs to be to still be in my collection but i haven't found a purple from them as much as i like this one so we're gonna go ahead and use that anyways don't really have a particular technique when I apply this, but normally when I do this, I will start with the lower lip. And this one in particular, it's not like goopy. It's more definitely more of a, a dry application than some of the other ones, even in the same finish that I have from ColourPop. I think I am done here. My hair is also almost dry. I have my lips done. It was kind of a hot mess trying to do my lips today. That's like the hardest thing on my face to do for me, especially when I'm using a really dark color like that is to do my lips. Hopefully you guys found this interesting and enjoyable. Hopefully you got something out of this. But yeah, uh, I am gonna be going to the house after this to go painting. 
And then after that, I'm volunteering at a dungeon party that should be fun. I'm gonna be working at the door and like talking to new people, talking to old friends as well that I'm gonna be seeing there. So I'm just kind of wearing, wearing this, I guess, to, to go to that. Certainly by no means do you need to wear a face like this to go to a BDSM party. Most people there won't wear any makeup, really. So I don't feel like you need to do this to fit in because that is certainly not the case. But this is just what I do because it's me. I am going to try my best to figure out how I can do this in a format where I can still like talk and do this at the same time and maybe like answer questions or react to things or something else. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Again, because so many of you did ask for video content like this, I hope you enjoy it and uh, I will see you all again very soon. If you want to see more from me, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. I make videos twice a week and if you really like this video, if you want to see some of those photo shoots that I mentioned as well as exclusive videos, extra live streams, things like that, that is over on my Patreon. A link to it will be down below. We also have a Discord chat which includes a makeup thread. So if you want to talk about makeup with me, see my looks, things like that, get advice, that is available on Patreon as well. Until I see you guys next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.